Hello, Virtual Doll Convention. We are back here in North Carolina, and we are here with Bradley Justice Yarbrough. Hi, Bradley. Hi, Rachel. Hi, Virtual Doll Convention. Thank you for having us back and for another delightful program that you have worked so hard to put together. We're so excited. Well, I'm very excited to be presenting this because this is something sort of like a sub-collection of my collection that you know, reflects the ongoing passion of not only my doll collection, but my art collection. So. When you told me we were doing the art of the doll, I was like, well, I have I have the art, I have the doll, so let's do oh, this. yay! Okay, so we're starting right here at the beginning of the story. The beginning of the story is is quintessentially the, the first doll. And I'm going to be talking more about the illustration and the art than I am the dolls themselves for this. So there was such an illustrated and graphic image created of Barbie that reflected the doll that helped tell the story of fashion and that she was a teenage fashion model. The first time we got a peek of this was the original box that Barbie came in. It had these great illustrations all over it, featuring some of the classic early outfits like Easter Parade, Gay Parisienne. But collectors love this first box because it kind of has a few mysteries, like this mm -hmm. orange dress, which didn't exist in Barbie's line until it was recreated years and years later. But just a few little subtle variations like this hat, and then on the side is this fashion in the blue dress. So we kind of call this the mystery fashions um, for Barbie's 50th anniversary, Mattel recreated them. But um, the art and a lot of times the illustration was created so far in advance of actual product being created that things things varied when it was, then it was done. So anybody that was a child in the early days of Barbie know when you bought the doll or an outfit, you got something like this, which is one of the fashion booklets. Yes. And these fashion booklets contained all of these illustrations done very much like the high fashion illustrations you would see like in Vogue or Bazaar Magazine at the same time. And they were quick artist renderings. We don't know the creator of all of these, and I've never seen any of the artwork offered, but it's so high fashion and so reflective of the era it really just kind of tells the story of barbie and fashion but for some of the things i have in my collection i do know the artists behind them and i do know some of the stories so we're going to move into this little next thing which is kind of a fun thing so everybody has a good hairdresser and only your hairdresser knows and barbie had a hairdresser she was hired in 1963 um, her name was jean Berger, and her first rule of order was to create a new hairstyle for Barbie. So she created this swirl ponytail that um, came out in 1964. But one of the other projects that she worked on was um, a set of wigs that was called the Color and Curl Gift Set, which came with um, a midge and Barbie head and then these wigs that the child could style and change the color with a special solution. And, um, she worked with an illustrator at Mattel to illustrate the booklet that would come with the set. Now, these are the original sketches. Oh my goodness. That were done for how to do the hairstyles. The artist watched Jean Berger create these hairstyles and then illustrated it. And then Jean did the instructions and then signed off on them. So we have some great um, hairstyles, which have great names. Like this one is Prom Queen that's illustrated on Midge. And then, I love it. Then some of these are actually kind of neat. Like this one, they decided not to do. So they actually asked <laughs> that one out. Not to be followed. So, um, and then this one's kind of crazy. This is called Double Glamour. I did they do that one? They did. I love that one. They did. This set came with, I think, four wigs and hair curlers and um, a rat tail comb and a brush. So you could oh, how fun. create all of these great hairstyles for Barbie. So it is such a treat to see like the back end of it. Like the, well, we always yeah. take for granted that mm -hmm. with anything that's illustrated or sculpted or whatever, someone spent hours oh, creating hours. that. Yeah. So, um, one of the things that is sort of synonymous with Barbie is her packaging. And these are two illustrations of outfits that were available in the 1970s. Um, and they were illustrated by a lady by the name of Ilana Dancer. Ilana had worked for the Standard Plastics Company, which was acquired by Mattel. And if you remember all of those vinyl cases and um, 
the Barbie houses from like the late sixties that were done in vinyl, they were produced by the standard plastics company. And she did a lot of the art and the illustration for them. So these are two oh, outfits that were going to be, um, done for packaging. This one was done, I think in 76 and it's very superstar looking. They had a very distinct way that they wanted Barbie's face and style illustrated. So this was a wonderful outfit that came with this tunic and these glittery silver pants and this turban. This ended up being a best buy, but from the illustration, it looks like they were gonna do it as more of a bridesmaid fashion, more of an, a deluxe fashion that would have come with like a bouquet or something like a bridesmaid. But in the end, they never used this illustration for anything and the outfit just came packaged simply, not even with shoes. Oh. It's such a shame because I love it. It's a great illustration. Barbie's hair just sort of oh, waving yes. in the wind. Wonderful artwork just to have. And of course, for a Barbie collector, this is something you guys would love. So Ilana Dancer and I think her sister both worked on a lot of the projects for Barbies all the way through to the 1990s. Um, and she is the lady that was responsible, I think, in the late 90s or early 2000s for a doll called Betty Spaghetti, which was a popular... <laughs> fun doll that was done for kids so she sounds like fun oh yeah she was a blast so, so. these are Bradley these are so the, the the condition is just blowing me away well amazing. this is really kind of an interesting thing because this is the doll is art and art becomes the doll this is the original artwork for the pretty changes Barbie paper doll that was done by Whitman um, Whitman did a lot of children's books, I think starting back as early as the 40s and 50s, and um, probably about five or six years ago, they sold their archive, which included all of this original artwork. So if you ever had the Pretty Changes Barbie doll, paper doll, or paper doll this is the original artwork that um, was inspired from. So, you know, I have the actual paper doll, but seeing it in person, the color is so much mm -hmm. more vibrant. But um, you can see these you are like the see... storyboards, and they had like the overlays where they would be putting Barbie's name on something. So, and you can see you... the you can see the pencil, you can see the the paint. It's just this is all the originals. It's it's pretty amazing, Way. and so. Um, it's one of my it's one of my favorite things to have. It's the, you know it's sort of like the the beginning and so we even have like the storyboard of how they were going to oh, do the cover um and how that was going to be laid out and the colors they were going to use oh gosh i love it it's so fun to be talking and seeing some barbie paper dolls because uh every day of our convention or one of our we receive paper dolls what do you feel like what do you feel about paper dolls i love paper dolls i mean that's something i played with as a kid um, and actually created as a kid, so I, I love paper dolls. Yeah, so, they're so much um, fun. Yeah, this is really kind of a, a fun set, and like I said, the color and everything is just oh, vibrant and beautiful. amazing. Paper dolls, I just think, were, are, were and are so good because um, they were affordable. They put them in newspapers. Yeah, and, 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 I mean, and it's kind of ironic that they would do a, a paper doll of Barbie, knowing that it was paper dolls that actually inspired the Barbie mm -hmm. story, knowing that... Ruth Handler had watched her daughter play with them, and that's how Barbie kind of came to be. So I, I think that. it's kind of ironic. So, so this is kind of a funny little thing. This is on a piece of like cellophane material, and this is like a either a negative or a positive for um, what they call a line camera. And these are illustrations that appeared on the packaging for a hair fair Barbie set, which was a a Barbie head that came with these hair pieces so you could change it. So it's this very 60s sort of um, flowing hair and reminds me of like some of the shampoo bottles from that time. So it's... It totally is, but then it's also like kind of Art Nouveau. It's, it it it's is. Amazing. It has that sort of mm -hmm. the the, the curly, Yeah. So I know it's we're getting so a glare, so we're just going to hold it up. But yeah, no, we can see it. Yeah, it's totally all those waves and curls and stuff, so... Cool. It has been such a wonderful element of discovery to really dive in and learn more about the artists and see the back end of all these creations that we think just just happen to be there. Yeah, but... they just, it just it's like it just, <laughs> it's just magic. It just shows up. So I this love is this. Actually, kind of great. I just love this. Knowing that I do a lot of camping and traveling, this is the cover art for a little golden book of Barbie goes camping and the illustration of 
Barbie is so superstar, so amazing, and Skipper in the background and the just star having a traveler. blast. Oh yeah, look at that. So this is also from the um, so Whitman cool. archive. Wow. So you were able to snap snap up some of these wonderful. It pieces. was real interesting. Um, I think there were a few of us that were very lucky when they started selling the archive. They just started listing it on eBay. And a lot of times oh. they were just listing it with like, you know, low opening bids. And I think people were buying it and getting affordable prices until everyone caught on what was going on. But I think they sold the entire archive of artwork. And it's not just Barbie, but it was mm -hmm. paper dolls and um, the covers for Little Golden Books. And Whitman did puzzles and sticker books. So it was amazing, amazing stuff. So it's a really great, it was a great opportunity, but as quick as it was there, it was all gone. Well, so. I am sure the conventioners are just so thrilled that you were able to get some because this is an amazing thing for us to see. I just love it. It's glam. I love it. So I just threw in a couple of these sketches. These are actually color copies of sketches um, in the archive that was the Joyce Christopher collection. And along with her doing a lot of sculpting for Mattel, she did a lot of um, concept art. She did a lot of sketching and illustration and it's just sort of whimsical and charming. That's she so did like sweet. baby tender love. She also kind of re-sculpted the body for the living Barbie. So it's cool to kind of see some you of these can... illustrations oh, yeah. of how that kind of came to be. You can see the similarities. It's um, very, very talented. I love it. So this is my my last piece of, of art and it is Francie. And for those of you who know me know that I love Francie. Francie's always been one of my favorite dolls. And this is from 1976. This was a coloring book. This is the original cover art. Look at that. And this is the layout. Look how cute Ken that looks. That oh, no, that's not Ken. That. Who is that? Um, it might be Ken because they went sailing with uh, Ken and a friend and Barbie went along as well. But we've got Francie on the cover. So sweet. So this oh, there is we the go. actual cover, coloring book of how it came to be. And Ironically, I had this coloring book as a kid, so to be able to own the artwork was just that had to have been phenomenal. thrilling for you. So the other thing that I have is I have all of the pages that are on the inside of the coloring book, along with all of the rejects that they did not use. So they did all of these, you know, illustrations um, that would appear inside for the child to color, some of which they didn't use for obvious reasons, and some of which they should have used for obvious reasons. So, yeah, that's so um, much fun. It's, it's fun to see those, um, and really kind of cool to kind of see how, how, the, how it all kind of comes together. It is so cool to see how it comes together. It's, it's like there are, there are so many steps and, and different people involved in the making of a coloring book which was actually probably quite a long process for them to put together. Absolutely. And some of the things that um, you discover is so much has to happen. So much has to be done. You know, there's probably 75 or a hundred pages that were illustrated for this book. And I think they only used like 30 of them. So you've got all these rejects, which like I was showing you, some are amazing, but there are all kinds of talented artists that worked on this packaging and the books and the, um, the booklets and all of the stuff that was done with Barbie, one of which did the Random House books with Cynthia Lawrence. And I did a little research into Cynthia Lawrence. She illustrated all of the Barbie Goes to New York. It was a series of books in the early 60s. And, but I found out that she also worked for the Carson Roberts Advertising Agency, which did a lot of the Mattel commercials. And she did all the storyboards for the commercials. So I had the opportunity to get some copies of some of those storyboards. It's really amazing awesome. to kind of know how, you know, a lot of talented people came in and left, but were still intertwined and continued working with them. So it's, you know, the amazing amount of talent that went into this is just incredible. It is. Now, Bradley, you are always on some kind of quest. Yes. What, what is, what is one of your current quests? Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> um, and well, I know you're working very hard on the Ruth Kronk collection. I am still working very hard on the Ruth Kronk collection. That has been amazing. It's been a labor of love. We've been um, shipping like 50 packages a day, diligently listing. We're putting Ruth's collection into the hands of collectors, mm -hmm. which is one of her wishes. So knowing that we're doing that is great. Um, there are a few things that I've kind of kept out of the collection that I'm kind of, 
you know. Of course. Very attached to you. So right. I'm kind of like, yeah, that's going to be my little bonus. Well, she was your this. friend. Oh, she was an amazing friend. And she was a friend to a lot of mm-hmm. Barbie people around the world. I've made some great connections and I've kind of extended my friendships to a lot of people um, that I, I, you know, become connected to them through this. Right. So a lot, I've got a new, a lot of new Australian friends, which I'm looking yes. forward to seeing it. Barbie convention this summer. And Barbie convention is in, well, when is Barbie convention? Um, it's um, the very first weekend in August of this year. It's in Kansas City, Missouri. I'm hosting a very um, fun tour of the UFDC Museum up there. I'm ha- hosting a, a Monday night sort of like grand opening of the exhibit we're doing on the Joyce Christopher collection and some other special things from a Barbie collection. And then the museum will be open to convention years on Tuesday and Wednesday of that week. So I think it's like the 30th and 31st of July. So I'm hoping Yay! that everyone will come and, and visit our museum and see what kind of other treasures we've got Oh, for sure. Out there. Well, the UFDC Doll Museum has a wonderful Barbie collection. And, oh, yes. And we have a great to you. collection. Mm-hmm. Um, we have um, Carol Spencer, who was a former designer for Barbie, d- donated a lot. We've received... The Joyce Christopher collection, which has a lot of Barbie and Mattel. And then we have on loan some really early dolls that actually appeared in some of the Hallmark um, cards and stuff in the early 90s that are on loan. And so we're real excited to have this. We also have Charlotte Johnson was Barbie's first fashion designer. And we actually have one of the dresses that she designed when she designed Ready to Wear for teenage girls in the 1930s so we have one of those dresses which was designed in kansas city so i love it so if you if you're inspired by this and you want to get on the barbie train you can do it this is a great year to do it and your your guy is bradley bradley you are one of the sponsors of the virtual doll convention how can our viewers buy from you and find you where well, where um, do you go if you go on facebook um, you can go to The Swell Doll Shop. That is my business, and that will link you to my eBay selling. I'm actually going to be doing some special sales exclusively on my Facebook page, and I'm also going to be selling in the virtual doll convention um, sales room, so find me there. That's I'm going to have a lot of amazing things, maybe even a few things you've seen doing some of my tours might be available. Perfect. So um, I'm looking forward to sharing my love, my passion, my collection with with others in the world. I love it. Bradley, thank you so much. This was an amazing program. We loved it. We'll see you very soon. Thank you, Rachel. Bye. Bye Bye-bye.